She's like a sickness in my brain A vision standing by the window pane She ripples through the blinds And leaves me in a daze It's in the way her body moves me The way she grabs me and intoxicates Until the signals in my mind Forget to operate Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a coffee and crime time about a case that I'm honestly surprised I haven't seen more people cover. In fact, as of when I'm recording this video, I haven't seen anybody cover it. So I'm excited to share it with you. I'm excited to dive really deep and kind of talk about it together and figure out together what could be possibly going on here. But before we get started, I'd like to have a word from our sponsor. As you guys know, sponsors keep this channel up and running because we are often demonetized. So every sponsor I choose, I choose with absolute care and certainty that it's something I like and that you guys will probably like as well. Our sponsor today is Native. Native is probably best known for their natural deodorants, but they have other products too, like body wash and toothpaste, and all of their products are made vegan and cruelty-free with safe and easy to understand ingredients. It's been many years that I've been thinking to switching to a natural deodorant. I have lymphedema in my left leg, and I've had it since I was 15, and it's kind of one of those things that we don't know why. They call it primary lymphedema because it wasn't caused by something. It wasn't caused by me having some sort of cancer and having to have a lymph node removed Moved, and that's why I have lymphedema. It just happened and it's a mystery. I'm a medical mystery, you know, along with all the other people out there who have primary lymphedema. But because I have been living with lymphedema for so long, it's something I have to constantly manage every single day. I have to watch my weight. I have to watch what I eat. I have to make sure I'm getting the right kind of exercise, not the kind of exercise that's going to cause trauma to my leg and, and make it swell up worse, uh, but the kind of exercise that's going to get my blood flowing and, you know, keep me healthy healthy and fat. Um, so it's it's a struggle. But in the past couple of years, I found myself sort of moving in the direction of more natural products, especially under my arms because you have a lot of lymph nodes under there. And most of the deodorants and antiperspirants on the market have aluminum in them. So in general, I just try to put things on and in my body that I don't think my lymph system is gonna have a hard time dealing with. And that's really why I love natural deodorant. But I have never found a natural deodorant before that really worked well, which was disappointing because I, I truly wanted to kind of go that natural or no deodorant route and neither of those things worked for me. So I've kind of been switching back and forth and trying different deodorants and, you know, just seeing what works. And, and usually for me, no natural deodorant has honestly worked. So when Native reached out to me to see if I wanted them to sponsor a video, I said, yeah, send it over. Let's see. Let's try it out because what's the worst that could happen? I'm stuck in the house with my family. So if I smell bad, they're the only ones that are going to know. This is the perfect time. And they did send me a box of three deodorants. And let me tell you, this may seem shallow and it may seem like this isn't what's important. Stephanie, but these deodorants smell amazing. Better than any natural deodorant I've ever used. Better than any normal deodorant or antiperspirant I've ever used. They are so so delicious smelling. So I picked out three scents. I picked out cucumber and mint, eucalyptus and mint, and coconut and vanilla. And by far, the eucalyptus and mint is my absolute favorite. I think it smells so good. To the point where the first day I put it on and I was wearing it when I was trying it, I kept smelling this like delicious mint smell. And I was like, who smells like this? Where's this coming from? And then I was like, oh, it's me. I smell so good. These smell so good. Okay, don't judge me. I did my nails yesterday, but then I cut my finger while I was cooking. And then I gave Bella a bath and my nail polish came off. It just like came off on this hand. So. That's why it looks janky. Don't judge me or make fun of me. I know. What I really love about this packaging is that it's so simple and clean and the scent is prominently displayed right here on the cap. Another thing that I think is really cute and sweet is, I don't know if you can see it, but each bar has a little heart engraved on the bar of deodorant. And you know, it's nothing fancy, but to me it's just a nice cute little touch that makes me feel happy when I see it. And then on the back, it's just gonna tell you the ingredients, which are very simple, and the directions, also very simple. 
I think coconut and vanilla is their most popular scent. And I can see why. It smells like summer. It smells like vacation. And the eucalyptus mint, like I said, is my all-time favorite. It smells a little masculine, but I kind of like that. It reminds me of when I used to wear Adam's Old Spice deodorant years ago. I was on an Old Spice kick, you know? There's just something about that blue bar. But I actually like that kind of spicy, clean scent. And then the cucumber and mint actually smells way less minty than the eucalyptus and mint. I'd say it smells more cucumbery, but it smells like real cucumber. You know, like when you're cutting cucumbers and dipping them in ranch dressing, it smells like that minus the ranch dressing. A little goes a long way with these deodorants, so you don't wanna go in and put on like 17 swipes. Two swipes, that's all you need, and it doesn't have this crumbly, sticky texture like normal deodorant does. It leaves behind like these clumps of white deodorant. I have to like brush my armpit off, you know, to get all the excess off. This is so smooth, it's so silky, and it almost feels like nothing is on your armpits. Okay, ready? I'm not kidding, right? One, two, that's all you need. Done. The freshness that I get when I put these deodorants on lasts all day long. It lasts after exercise. It lasts after running after these kids all day long. It lasts after sitting in front of these hot lights and sweating my butt off. And it comes in a wide variety of scents with familiar ingredients such as coconut oil and shea butter. And all of these deodorants are aluminum free, paraben free, and sulfate free. And don't forget, vegan and cruelty free, which is really important. Native also offers free shipping to a wide variety of countries, which I am putting on the screen right now. Three deodorants are normally $36, but if you use my link in the description box and code Stephanie, you'll get them for $24. That's 33% off plus free shipping. Thank you guys so much for listening to the sponsor. I definitely suggest if you've been thinking about switching to natural deodorant or if you're just looking to change up your deodorant, you should definitely check out Native. I really enjoy it. I love how they smell. They work. And I would much rather have deodorant shipped to my front door than have to go to a store and get it. I mean, you guys know me. I don't like leaving the house. So eventually, I hope we live in a world where everything can just be shipped to my front door. I mean, we kind of do now. Thank you, Native, for sponsoring this video, and let's get started on the video. Okay, like I said, this is a crazy case. I'm really surprised I haven't seen anyone cover it. It's so odd. I'm not even sure where to start when I'm explaining it to you, but I guess I'll just start with the crime itself, which happened on February 18th, 2014, when 11-year-old Penelope Carmel Inks and her mother, Heather Renee Inks, disappeared. Heather had failed to show up for a custody hearing, which compelled the judge to award Penelope's father, Kevin Inks, full custody of Penelope. But it was too late. Heather had taken Penelope and fled, and no one knew where they were. The next year, Heather was placed on the FBI's most wanted list with the warning that she could be armed and dangerous and also maybe a danger to herself and others. Kevin Inks then posted a heartfelt message to his daughter Penelope on YouTube, urging people to continue looking for her and telling her that he missed her in case she was listening. Hello Penelope, it's been a long time. Um, I think about you every single day that goes by. Um, I still live on the beach. I'm there quite frequently walking the dog and I see families together and fathers playing with their daughters and I miss having that with you very much. Um, I wonder how tall you are right now. I wonder if you're continuing to be a fantastic artist. This is one of the last pieces that you gave me. Um, and for now, the only thing that I have on to hold is the pictures of you. Um, these are some of the last ones that we have together. Um, I just can't wait to hold you in the arms, for real. Um, I have a lot of your belongings that um, you weren't able to take with you. I have a lot of your clothes, even though I'm sure you won't fit them anymore. I have all your books. I have your electron microscope that I bought you for your birthday. I have your bunny here, one of your first stuffed animals. So I have a lot of your belongings that you um, weren't able to take with you. Um, I just want you to know that uh, I think about you every single day that goes by. This picture is on my refrigerator. Um, you're on my phone, I look at your pictures and I can't help but wonder you know, how tall you are, um, if you cut your hair, if you still have long hair. Um, and you have a lot of family members that are, that are praying for you and have a lot of love for you. Um, and they can't wait for you to be back in our family. Um, I, I pray for that every day. And I think that the time 
it feels like it's going to be soon, but I don't want you to be afraid because I don't blame you for anything, any of this, at all. Now, Heather's occupation was listed as model and actress, so the media began to call her the nude model kidnapper when it was uncovered that she'd dreamed of being in Playboy and had sent some of her photos to Playboy in an attempt to be chosen to be in Playboy, but they hadn't responded. It looks like Heather did a lot of kind of promotional modeling, like when a company or brand hires someone to advertise for them at events, you know, pretty girls wearing Red Bull shirts, etc. Uh, there's a YouTube video of her from six years ago at the Houston Grand Prix titled Model Heather Inks at the Houston Grand Prix. What are you guys doing? That's the title of it. Model Heather Inks at the Houston Grand Prix. What are you guys doing? But the person who posted it has their YouTube name listed as Heather Inks. So I don't know if she's the one who posted it. If that's her YouTube channel, there's no other content on that channel. I can turn into a picture taking. It's running. It's running. Okay. Maybe it's doing. Maybe But while I was searching for more information about this woman, I found another article printed in the Orlando Sentinel on April 21st, 2006, titled Yoga, A Bonding Experience. So it looks like before they lived in Texas, Heather, Kevin, and their daughter Penelope lived in Florida. The article reads as follows. Penelope Inks mimics her mom as she puts both hands on the mat and forms an upside down V. She is doing downward dog, but the yoga pose lasts only a few seconds. Penelope is more interested in running around the room, yanking a banner from the wall. The antics can be forgiven. She's only 20 months old and has a short attention span. Heather Inks, Penelope's mother, teaches the mom and toddler yoga class for children aged 1 to 3 at Blue Sky Yoga Center in Deland. So Heather was not only a model slash actress, but apparently a yoga teacher as well. And she told the Orlando Sentinel that she herself had been doing yoga since the age of 10. Looking at this article, seeing the picture of a happy 20-month-old Penelope with what appears to be an attentive and caring mother doing yoga poses together, it's jarring finding out what happens to Penelope later. Because just this month, at the beginning of April, Penelope was located after almost six years of searching for her. According to the press release from Klein Investigations, a private investigative firm that Kevin Inks hired to search for his missing daughter, in the early morning hours of April 4th, 2020, at approximately 1 a.m., wanted fugitive Heather Renee Inks was taken into custody by Madison County Sheriff's Department and the U.S. Department of Justice, FBI. Inks was found at a local motel in Madisonville, Texas. Now, what seems to have happened is Heather herself called 911, claiming her ex-husband was trying to poison her. When the police arrived to the Days Inn and questioned her, she gave them a fake name. When they ran this name through the system, it came up as an alias that known fugitive Heather Inks had been using. At this point, the police searched the hotel room and found 16-year-old Penelope hiding in the bathroom. According to reports, the teenager was only 74 pounds, extremely thin and emaciated, and living off of Dr. Pepper and candy. Now, the clerks at the front desk of the motel were questioned, and they said that Heather and a man, her boyfriend, had checked in on April 2nd, and so far, the authorities have no idea where Heather has been keeping Penelope for the past five and a half years, but they do know she has not been attending school, and she's clearly been emotionally abused and was incredibly traumatized when they recovered her not knowing who she could and couldn't trust. Penelope was put into the care of CPS and Heather was taken into custody. When Heather's boyfriend was questioned, he claimed he had no idea that she was a wanted woman. He didn't even know what her real name was. He only knew her as her alias. Now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a speculative person and I'm not sure how much of that I believe. And so far, any statement that he's made that kind of elaborates on what happened with him and Heather, it hasn't been released. But I just have to ask myself, how did this man not question the child that Heather was just carrying around with her everywhere, or the physical and emotional state that this child was in. Did he not question that Penelope wasn't going to school, or living the life of a normal child, or eating real food? Now, although Penelope was found alive, this this isn't really a happy ending. I mean, I suppose it ended as best it could in this case. But first of all, she's clearly going to suffer from severe trauma. Who knows the kinds of things that she's been subjected to in the past years? And it seems that Heather and her ex-husband, Kevin, have been experiencing a lot of conflict 
since really before Penelope was even born. The couple went on the Dr. Phil show on an episode in 2008 titled A Model's Dangerous Marriage. I can't play the clips here because Mr. McGraw doesn't mess around, but I did find the transcripts, which I'll read to you and I'll link the transcript for you. I'm going to read most of what's actually relevant, but if you want to kind of peruse it yourself, the link will be in the description box. So this transcript says, It was the picture-perfect wedding. A model marrying a handsome man she says treated her like gold. But after a few years of marriage, Kevin and Heather are in a dangerous relationship filled with verbal abuse and violence. Should these two work on saving their marriage or get out before someone gets killed? Heather says Kevin has picked her up by her neck, thrown her to the ground, and held her at knife point all in front of their three-year-old daughter. Kevin says Heather is controlling and gets in his face, and all he tries to do is intimidate her. Then they quote Kevin in this transcript saying, if my wife wasn't so attractive, I probably would have hit the road a long time ago. Heather is also quoted as saying, when Kevin and I met, he was almost too good to be true, kind, and soft-spoken. After Kevin and I got married, everything changed. The first time I noticed that there was a serious problem with Kevin was the day of my first sonogram. He assaulted me after the sonogram. Once he saw the baby and that I was definitely pregnant, he became controlling. I got married, I bought a home, and found out I was pregnant all within the same month. That was overwhelming for me. Now, Kevin says, I did want children, but not right away. I wanted to get used to being a husband first. I felt almost immediately she was trying to control me. I'm one of those guys. I've been a bachelor my whole life. I'm not going to be whipped by this person who's 12 years younger than I am and thinks she knows everything in my world. Kevin also explained his state of mind after that first sonogram, saying, when she was pregnant with my daughter, she said, I don't want to bring a child into this marriage. And I counterattacked with, well, why don't you just let me get it over with and punch you in the stomach and be done with it? The transcript goes on to say, Heather says that their marriage is currently in total chaos. Kevin calls me insane, stupid, crazy B-word, the C-word. Kevin has also been physically violent with her. She said, quote, he threw me down and strangled me numerous times during my pregnancy, slammed me up against the wall, squeezed me so hard that I couldn't breathe and I thought I was going to break my ribs, held a knife to my throat while threatening to kill me. Now, the Dr. Phil show put video cameras in Kevin and Heather's house, and these cameras capture Kevin calling Heather a psycho. He says, you nag and complain about everything I do. You're driving me crazy. I would rather be without you. Now, Kevin acknowledged to Dr. Phil that the marriage is in a shambles, and he said, quote, I have picked her up by the neck before. I wasn't trying to hurt her. I was trying to intimidate her to get out of my face and leave me alone. I have threatened my wife before because when I tell her to leave the room, she'll keep coming back in. Kevin admits to saying, vile, despicable things when he is in a fit of rage. Going on to say, it's not an excuse to do it, but if she would just leave me alone, it wouldn't happen. I don't want to hurt my wife and I get no enjoyment out of bullying her. So Heather told Dr. Phil that she was afraid for her life. And she said, quote, Kevin told me if I take his money and we split up that he will slice my throat and kill me. Kevin told me in detail that he was imagining coming downstairs, grabbing a kitchen knife and stabbing me to death. He told me he'll bury my body or put it in a lake. He would get away with it because nobody would know that he had pre-planned it so he wouldn't get first degree murder, he would only get manslaughter. So apparently these cameras that the Dr. Phil show put in the home of Kevin and Heather, Kevin unplugged them. So Dr. Phil asked why he did that and why he seemed to always go into no camera zones, asking Kevin if he was trying to protect and hide his conduct and behavior. And Kevin responded that he didn't intentionally go into no camera zones, but he did it to get away from Heather. He says he unplugged the cameras because Heather constantly followed him around, trying to provoke him into saying or doing something that would make him look bad in front of the cameras. The transcript goes on to say that Kevin had picked up the Bible and seen the light. He insisted that his behavior was improving, and now it's Heather who needs to get help. So Dr. Phil asks Heather if she takes some responsibility for the drama, and she says yes. And he tells her that there are times that she needs to just back off, to which she responds that she tries to leave, but Kevin takes her car keys, and if she runs away on foot, he tracks her down. So Dr. Phil responds to her, you don't really expect me to accept that answer. You think the only time I'm talking about is when he won't give you your keys? Or do you think it's when you wake him up and talk to him in the middle of the night and you won't let him escape the pressure cooker? Heather replies, I usually try to avoid him. And Dr. Phil responds, your capacity for insight is underwhelming. Dr. Phil doesn't mess around. You can say what you want about Dr. Phil. He's not a real doctor, you know, just a, a TV guy, does it all for TV. But 
He's he's direct with people. So some of the video footage that Dr. Phil cameras captured is really scary. The camera installed in the home records their three-year-old daughter, Penelope, screaming and kicking as Heather tries to tame her behavior. Heather says, quote, I am devastated by everything my daughter has seen. Penelope witnesses Kevin being abusive to me all the time because she's with me all the time. The footage also shows Kevin and Penelope in his bedroom and Penelope sitting right next to Kevin on the bed and Kevin yells at Heather, what else is new? You're always paranoid. And I guess in the video, you can hear Penelope pleading with her dad, daddy, 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 calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Kevin told Dr. Phil, quote, Penelope acts out from what she sees from our conflict. I know that it is affecting her and her tantrums and the things she says, such as, I hate you, daddy. He explains why he taught his daughter the C word, saying, quote, in a fit of rage, I said, do you hear what mommy is saying? She is acting like a, and I called her the C word, and I spelled it out for my daughter, and I tried to get her to say it. Heather says that Penelope no longer acts like a normal child, saying, quote, when my daughter is angry with another child, she runs over to them and wants to strangle them. Footage taken in Kevin and Heather's bedroom shows Penelope sitting next to her father saying, daddy cheated. And Kevin directs his response to what Penelope said towards Heather saying, isn't that such a nice thing for her to know? I wonder where she learned that. Heather told Dr. Phil that she worried about Penelope's safety when Penelope was with Kevin. She said, quote, when my daughter was about two or three months old, her crying annoyed him so much that he told me if I couldn't get her to shut up, he would crush her skull with his bare hands and kill her. Heather said more recently, Kevin took Penelope into the bathroom and spanked her saying, quote, I heard my daughter scream and then he spanked her two more times. My daughter told me that she was worried daddy was going to kill her. She also points out that Penelope doesn't like to be upstairs when Kevin is there because Penelope says her father is really mean. But then Dr. Phil asks Heather, why is she carrying Penelope around while she engages in screaming fights with her husband? And Heather responds, quote, most of the time I carry her away and get in my vehicle and leave if I can. A lot of times he follows me out and he's punched my vehicle. Mr. McGraw responds, remember, Mr. McGraw don't mess around. And he tells Heather, I am not blind. You are carrying this child into battle. I have you on tape carrying the child. You didn't think about that when you wanted to show us how ridiculous his behavior was. And Heather responds, she doesn't like to be without me because she's worried about me. And Dr. Phil tells her, every time I ask you something, you have an excuse, you have a dodge. What I see is somebody who is nagging and antagonistically pecking away at another person with your child in the middle of it. I mean, this was absolutely heartbreaking to read. This poor girl, it seemed like she was doomed from the start. Both of her parents referred to her as my daughter, my daughter, my daughter, when speaking about her to Dr. Phil. This is not loving language. This is possessive language, language that shows ownership. They don't call her by her name. They don't call her our daughter. It's always my daughter because in reality, Penelope was a pawn to be used by both her parents against the other. And that's just my opinion. I mean, feel free to let me know what you think if you agree with me or disagree with me. It's fine. We can disagree. I have the right to an opinion. I'm thankful that Penelope was found alive, but is she well? Is she going from the frying pan into the fire? Has Kevin gained some perspective and wisdom as times passed? As he got older, realized how much he missed and loved his daughter? I truly hope so. And what is the deal with Heather? Why would she call the police and say her ex-husband was trying to poison her? Was she referring to Kevin? Was she hallucinating? Is she on drugs? Does she have some mental health issues? What happened to Penelope these past years? What does she have to endure? So many questions, so much worry for this young girl whose life has already been so full of turmoil before she even hit her 16th birthday. And it's like, this girl, I don't feel like she'll ever feel completely normal again. And that is heartbreaking to me. Now, apparently when I was researching this a couple of days ago, she had not been reunited with her father. She was in the care of CPS and they're getting her counseling and therapy and things. But um, the, the idea is obviously that she will be reunited with her father and Heather is going to prison. So, I mean, we have this progression from when Penelope was 20 months old and her mother was bringing her to, you know, mommy and me yoga classes and teaching her downward dog. And then we go even further down the road. Penelope's about three. Um, Kevin and Heather are on the Dr. Phil show. Their marriage is obviously horrible. And, and I just want to kind of insert this in case anybody else is dealing with a similar kind of dynamic in their relationship. You do not have to. And I know that there may be some of you who disagree with me once again, that that's okay. But in my opinion, if you are a man or a woman and the person that you are married to or in a relationship with or living with or whatever, if they hit you, if they abuse you, if they hurt you, 
they don't love you. Period. I'm sorry that I'm sorry if you disagree. They do not love you and they will never change and they will never start loving you. At least they won't love you more than they love themselves. There is never a time or place for violence in a marriage or a relationship between two people. Never. This should be the person that you feel the safest with. This should be the person that's protecting you from other people, from violence, from other people, from hurt from other people. This is the person that should protect you, that should take your heart and care for it as if it was their own. So if a person is hitting you, if a person is strangling you, if a person is saying they're going to kill you and then put your body in a lake, they do not love you. And that doesn't mean you're unlovable. It just means they don't love you and you can go. You should go and you should leave. In my experience, domestic violence doesn't get better. It gets worse. It escalates. So please, if you are in a position where this is happening to you and you feel like you can't get out, especially now, when we are stuck in quarantine, it it really terrifies me to think of all the women and men out there who are in um, partnerships or marriages that have violence and they are stuck with their abuser in the house. There are ways for you to get help and there are numbers that you can call. And honestly, quarantine or no quarantine, if you're being hurt in your home by somebody, you can leave and you should leave. I'm sorry, don't come for me Trump, don't come for me Fauci, don't come for me whoever is out there that's gonna come for me because if you are in a house that you are being hurt and abused in, you can go and you should go. And I mean, don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying Heather was any better in the relationship, I'm just saying in general, in relationships, like if this is happening to you, then you should go. Heather obviously was an antagonizer and I've seen this multiple times in relationships where there'll be one person who just can't quit, who just can't stop, who just cannot walk away. When somebody tells you they wanna be alone, when somebody tells you, I don't wanna talk about this right now, when somebody says, I need space, you need to respect that. Stop putting yourself in their face. Stop forcing them to address it at that point because when they say, I need time, they mean, I need time. You cannot force somebody to address something or talk about something on your timetable, even if it's something that needs to be addressed and needs to be discussed. That's the thing about a good and healthy relationship and a good and healthy marriage. You work together. You solve problems together. So if one person's not ready to solve a problem, if one person isn't in the right headspace to, to address that issue and try to resolve it, if it's just too tense between you guys, if there's just too much anger, it's not a good time and you have to wait until they're ready. Sometimes it's better to um, cool off and get a more level head before you talk about something. But some people, and I feel like Heather is one of those people, they just wanna keep pushing and pushing and pushing almost like they wanna break you, almost like they want you to snap, almost like they want you to lash out so they can point at you and say, this is the bad person, this is the bad guy. So there are huge issues and the huge problems on, on both Heather and Kevin's part when when this Dr. Phil show happened at least. I don't know who these people are now. This was several years ago. But I, I worry about Penelope coming out of this needing a lot of help, needing a lot of care, needing a lot of patience before she, you know, returns to normal if that's even a thing that's possible for her. And I just hope that she has people in her life who can give her that patience. And I hope that Kevin has grown up to the point where he can care for her now and you know that's that's who she has so so he better have let me know what you guys think about this let me know if you've heard of it or read it before if it's popped up in your news feed i mean i had to search deep for this one i don't even know how i how i came across it or how i encountered it it was just like going through news articles and hitting links and hitting links and going into different links and then all of a sudden i was in a place i'd never been before and, and there the story was and i really think it should have gotten more exposure in the media because it's crazy i didn't even know this girl was missing and i just feel like i should have known that she was missing if it had been more widely publicized i think that people could have looked out for her because we know Heather wasn't at this day's end for, you know, the whole almost six years. She had to have been other places. Did she keep Penelope hidden away, locked away the whole time? It's just so scary. And I feel like something has to be involved that goes beyond just keeping her away from her father's trophy. Because I really think that's what that's why she took Penelope. I think she took Penelope to punish Kevin. And you see this happen often. I think she took Penelope to punish Kevin. But there has to be something else. There has to be some sort of um, mental break or, or drug or alcohol or substance abuse issue. Because normal people 
don't do this. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this coffee and crime time. Make sure that you check out the description box and hit the link and use code Stephanie if you're interested in trying Native for 33% off. You can get three natural, delicious smelling deodorants for just $24 with free shipping. I hope everyone is staying safe, staying happy, staying calm out there. I have got a lot on my plate here lately. I am getting ready for Halloween, doing research, putting together notes. I am also working on a podcast um, that's going to be probably a couple months before it's even a thing, but um, I'm working on a podcast. I've got, you know, homeschooling duties, so that's going to be lessening next month when the kids are off school for the summer, off school for the summer. <laughs> so they're always home. It's always summer here. So that's going to be lessening up, and, and hopefully I'll have more time to focus on what I need to focus on, but probably not because they will still be here. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Stay kind, stay beautiful, stay safe, and stay home, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Like, did I not bring it down? Oh, I did. Whoa.